In this video, I will be demonstrating the safety device and safety group monitor object from safety device library. A quick overview. Safety device objects include add-on instruction and HMI faceplate for the native safety instructions like DCS, DCSTL, DCSTM and CR out. Using the add-on instruction and faceplate, user can monitor safety device status, faults and diagnostics. This helps in troubleshooting the safety devices and also monitor the status on HMI. Several safety device objects can be combined into a safety group using the safety group member and safety group monitor instructions. The safety group member add-on instruction passes the status of safety device to safety group monitor instruction. The safety group monitor add-on instruction and HMI faceplate provides a summary status of all safety instructions that are assigned under the group. This helps the operator to monitor all the safety devices of a single group in a faceplate. The instruction also provides event list and first out to understand which device safety demand triggered first. The safety group monitor instructions can be further grouped under another safety group monitor instruction. For example, consider an application where safety devices are grouped as zones using safety group monitor instruction. These zones can be further grouped into a single safety group using safety group monitor instruction. This way, operator can have an overall view of all the zones and then he can further open each zone faceplate to understand the device status in each zone. Safety device instructions can be part of multiple groups. For example, a safety gate that is part of two zones can be connected to two groups using two individual safety group member instructions. I have a demo application built here. The application has safety devices like emergency stop buttons, safety gate and light curtains. All the safety input devices are grouped under a group called inputs. For outputs, safety contactors are used which is grouped under group called outputs. In the logic side, I have unit and equipment as part of machine framework. The safety program consists of safety logic. The input routine contains all safety input device instructions like DCS, DCSTL and DCSTM. Each of this instruction has its own safety device object that provides status about the safety device. The safety device objects is grouped using safety group member instruction. As shown, the safety device object for DCS instruction is grouped under the group called inputs. Each device is assigned a unique ID in the group. The output routine contains safety output device like CR out. Like inputs, the CR out instruction has its own safety device object which provides the status and is grouped under the safety group called outputs using the safety group member instruction. The monitor routine consists of safety group monitor instruction. This instruction provides a combined information about device presence, device suspended, safety demand, reset required, diagnostic present, fault present and device muted. All this information can be viewed on the faceplate. The logic routine contains safety logic as per the application. Instead of using the status bit of each safety instruction, I have used the combined status from safety group monitor instruction for the logic. This simplifies the logic and will need no change if another safety device is added to the input or output group. The simulation routine is used only for the demo purpose to simulate the input devices. The simulation routine is connected to the panel view emulator application. 
which shows the input devices. In the HMI application, I have navigation button to launch the safety group monitor faceplate. I launch the faceplate for input groups. Here you can see the IDs of safety devices that are connected to the group. Also the status bit of each safety device. The instruction identifies the first device to trigger safety demand and it's captured in the first out status. The event log shows the device ID, device description, device type, type of event and status. I'll close the faceplate. The individual faceplates for each safety device object can be launched from their navigation buttons. I launch the faceplate for the safety gate. Here user can monitor the device status and input status. In case of a fault, the faceplate provides the fault description and the corrective measures. I'll close the safety gate faceplate. For the demo, first I'll trigger the e-stop on the operator station 1. You can notice both input and output group has indicated safety demand. I'll open the input group faceplate. The faceplate shows first out as e-stop operator 1 and event as safety demand. The same can be seen on the status indicators. I'll close the faceplate. I'll open the output group faceplate. This shows that the safety contactor is in safety demand. I'll reset the e-stop and do a safety reset using clear command of state machine. Now the safety demand is cleared. Next I have a scenario where a safety device has faulted. The input group indicates that it's not ready. I'll open the input group faceplate. Here on the faceplate, it shows the fault is present in e-stop panel 1 and a reset is required. The same can be seen on the DCS instruction of e-stop panel 1 and also the safety device instruction. To further understand the fault, I'll open the e-stop panel 1 faceplate. The faceplate shows that channel A and channel B are in inconsistent state. The indicator shows the channel B input has failed. The corrective action is to check the wiring, perform a functional test and reset the fault. I'll fix the fault first. Now you can see the both channel status are on. As per the corrective action, I'll need to do a functional test which is pressing the e-stop and resetting it. Let's say I don't do the functional test and do a safety reset. The DCS instruction error code asks user to do a functional test. I'll do the same by pressing and releasing the e-stop. Next I'll do the safety reset. Now the fault is cleared and device is in ready state. Having a faceplate with fault description helps operator to understand the fault and take corrective actions which help save downtime. Next I'll demonstrate the suspend function in safety device object. The suspend input in the safety device object is used to mask the safety demand from the safety device. When a safety device is suspended, it is to be ensured that another safety function is superseding so the overall machine safety is not compromised. I have an example of safety gate logic here. The suspend rung is not part of the library and needs to be developed by the user to suit the application. 
as shown here once the unlock request is given the dcstl instruction turns on the unlock command and safety demand to avoid aborting the machine the safety demand of dcstl instruction is masked using the suspend input to ensure the hazard remains stopped additional safety device is used first i'll turn on the unlock request you can notice the unlock command is on the o1 output is turned off indicating safety demand the suspend input is turned on to mask the safety demand the safety device object is not indicating safety demand thus the machine is not aborted i'll open the inputs group monitor face plate on the face plate the mute bar suspend status is indicating that the device is suspended also the event log shows the safety gate 1 is suspended the diagnostic presents is for functional test to open and close the gate the same can be understood from the safety gate face plate as well i'll open and close the gate for functional test next i'll remove the unlock request now the suspend is removed i'll show the same on the inputs group monitor face plate you can see the mute bar suspend status is now turned off and event log shows the input suspended status is now cleared to understand further about safety device objects and safety group monitor object download the safety device library from rockwell automation website Thanks for watching the video.